is the retraction gap. So we can make it smaller, thus we can reduce weight. We've lost a lot of weight by not having a tailplane. And we've also reduced the weight because the, the actual fin does not support a tailplane, so it can be much lighter. So we can keep the weight down because you, to all together, all that weight would be 194 tons. So the aircraft per se is 100 tons with 94 tons of fuel on it. And we use 84 of that between here and New York. Right, also you can see that we put actuators and the hydraulic um, actuators for the elevons on the outside surface or on the lower surface of the wing. So we do not go inside the tank thus reducing the capacity of the tank. Everything, the engines are stuck on the lower surface of the wing. They're not inside the wing in any way at all. But there is also, that is a dry bay area over there. So should you have a fuel leak, it will not leak on top of a hot engine. Right, you come this way now. This undercarriage is too tall to go inside these bays up here. There's two bays which open to the centre line. When you're off the ground, you select up. Those will normally retract, but this one shortens itself. So therefore, this bit disappears inside here, and it thus reduces the length going into that undercarriage bay. When you select it up, the doors obviously open. This will go inside there, and on, this is connected to the uplock when it's in that bay. And once it's gone in there, it will trip that uplock and close the door. So that's sequenced to close the door once the undercarriage is up. Now with the 13 tanks we have on the set line, number 11 tank is at the back there and that holds 9 tonnes of fuel and it's used as a trim tank throughout flight and also likewise the flight engineer will move fuel around to approximately 20 odd tonnes throughout the flight to actually trim the aircraft out because A we haven't got a tailplane to trim it normally so we have to do it by trimming it with fuel forward and after the centre line. Thirteen tanks are indicated above your head there, and the two connections, as you see, Jet A1 fuel here. Now, the intake you can see, number three is in the high speed mode, as is number one and two. Number four is in the takeoff mode, so the ramps are up and out of the way. And these oscillate and control the air going into the engine. Right, now then, when we are actually landing at 13 degrees, the nose goes down to 12 degrees, or is selected to 12 degrees. And likewise, on the ground, it goes down, or is selected to 5 degrees. So taxiing it and take off, 5 degrees, landing, 12 degrees. Look at the leaning edge of this wing. It deals with all attitudes of this aircraft and speeds. So the aircraft is, as it changes attitude, so does the lift on this wing. At low speeds you are at 13 degrees, creating a vortex over the top of the wing which speeds the air up immensely and thus reducing the pressure on the top of the wing so we get lift. Right, come this way now and send you up the back and so Jane can have a word with you on the inside. Just a little bit of thing while we pass this, you look at the back end here. And you've got the afterburner ring. We inject another five tons across the ship, mind you. So, and you've got 1,250 degrees inside there. So if you put more fuel at the back here, this will catch fire. And thus, you get another 25% of thrust. That's why black eyelids are slightly closed when you've got afterburner in, in, in operation. Would you like to come this way now? So, uh, wind your head as you go through the rear door.
stand up once you get to this part. Once you're in the carpet area, you can be okay. Careful of your head in that first section, sir. Just wait here for the Hello there, be careful of your head there, sir. You go to stand up as you come through to this area. Mind your head in that first section. <laughs> Stand up straight. Right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard Delta Golf, the Brooklyn's Concorde. Now, when Concorde was in service, you never would have had to duck as you boarded like you had to just now. And the reason for that, if I can please through, there would have been a wall across this section here, and that would have been the luggage compartment. So it's not a huge area, is it? This tiny section here was the galley. And that's where they prepared the meals for the 60 passengers that sat to the rear of Concord. Again, it's not a huge space, is it? <laughs> if you look to your right and left, you'll see that we've left part of Concord exposed so you can see some of its construction. And when you have a look at it, the first thing you'll probably notice is the small size passenger windows. Now, the reason for that is Concord used to fly at 60,000 feet, which was far higher than any other passenger airline. And at that height, the pressure inside the cabin and outside the cabin was far greater. So what that would mean is if there was any damage to the windows whilst it was in flight, because of the small size, the pressure in the cabin would be lost at a much slower rate. So that's the reason for that. Now the other thing at 60,000 feet, the temperature outside would be minus 55 degrees. Extremely cold. But due to the speed that Concorde used to fly, the windows of the plane and the skin of the plane would become extremely hot. They'd be 90 degrees, which is equivalent to a kettle of boiling water. The nose of the plane would be 127 degrees, so very hot indeed. So design engineers had to come up with this cooling system, which is what you see here, and it runs right along the length of the plane. So what that would mean is if you're a passenger on Concord and you were sat next to the window and you touched it, it would still be really warm, but it wouldn't burn you. <laughs> Reassuring, isn't it? <laughs> now, the other thing when metal gets hot, it stretches. So during every flight, Concorde would stretch between 6 and 8 inches, which is amazing, isn't it? Oh. Right, I'm going to leave you to have a look around. There's some interesting bits to see. There's a short video for you to watch shortly, but I'll give you a shout when that comes on, OK? But do have a good look around. That's quite interesting. That's all the 20 Concords that were built. Um, four of them were more or less used for tests, but um, oh, probably six of them, sorry. And then um, France and Great Britain had the other ones for passenger service. The Delta Golf, as you can see, we're at Brooklands. Uh, Golf, Bravo, Bravo, Delta Golf. 